Woohoo! Okay, so welcome. I'm Kelly, the plant based kitchenista. If you haven't met me before, I know we have quite a few new people that are joining us, so welcome. Um, I know you're coming from like probably Chef AJ and stuff, who's absolutely wonderful. Chef AJ, we love you. You're the one of the best. So um, we are going to be making tonight beefless stew, which is perfect for our 30 degree, 20 degree weather here in Colorado. I'm supposed to go, go down to seven starting like on Saturday, but go down to seven on Monday. So we're like, yay. So beefless stew is perfect. And then having a really nice type of a hearty salad with that, you know, so you can have any type of salad that you want, but I like one that's like a cranberry almond spinach. So it has a little bit of sweet because you've got that real heartiness of the stew and it gives you a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of lightness, but still at the same time, it's really good. And we always talk about that, you know, when you're doing stews and you're doing the salads that, that even that I'm presenting is think about the space. So we're giving you like the onions, the carrots, you know, the, the mirepoix, you've got all the things like that, that they're in there. Um, and so, but you could add, you know, you've got the, you've got to have the mushrooms because that gives you that heartiness. But if you don't like potatoes, you could put in sweet potatoes. You could put in, I love corn in stews. So <clears throat> I don't have corn on this recipe, but that's something that you can throw on the side, peppers, you know, or you can just do just a, a real basic like this and then use it on baked potatoes and mashed potatoes and, and all those things. And truthfully, when I make this and everybody always laughs, because if you, anybody knows Jerry, they know this is true, that when I make this by probably tomorrow, maybe Saturday at the most, it will be gone. He will eat huge, you know, his bowls are like, are like something like this, you know, this is his bowl of stew. And then he puts usually bread with it or anything like that. So he's real, real big when it has like stews and things. We'll just keep eating and eating until it's gone, which is actually a good thing because then I don't have lots of leftovers that I have to throw away. So before I get started making recipes, Jerry, you're going you to come up and introduce yourself. And if you see me looking this way, it's because I'm just making sure if anybody's coming in that they can. Okie dokie. Hi there, everyone. Uh... For those first timers, we've got a lot of those today. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Jerry Casados, a plant-based nutritionist and a certified instructor for John McDougall's Arts Solution Program, which we practice, and I have a uh, private practice, which I you know, teach my clients that too. So get the same teachings you do from John McDougall, which he's been doing this for over 40 years, and it's been he's great. But anyway, I also we're plant been plant-based now, going on 16 years <laughs> next month, uh, matter of fact. But yeah, I, I, we I went plant-based, and I went plant-based for health reasons, my own heart disease, had uh, high cholesterol, blood pressure, three blood pressure medica medications, cholesterol medication, and I'm um, off all those now, lost 35 pounds and all's better. And I went to see Dr. John McDougall in his 10 day live-in program and uh, got better in 10 days. And the, the uh, other patients in the class also got better. Everybody lost uh, at least two pounds in, in 10 days. And most people got off their medication. So it's an amazing uh, program. And I hope I can uh, share that with people. If you have any questions about nutrition, be glad to help. Uh, answer any questions on nutrition. Our website information is there and everything on YouTube. We do all this. And we're doing a lot of classes around. We used to do a lot more before COVID, of course, but now uh, we're just doing the uh, Zoom stuff. So with that, I'll just go wait and I'll get my big bowl of stew later. Oops. His two big bowls of stew more than likely is probably, doesn't want to say that, but that's probably more true. Okay. Um, so we're going to, so we're going to get everything started because it takes just a little bit and stuff to cook the stew because you've got some of those hard vegetables. And so we want to go ahead and get those going. So it says like you can either do the water if you want to start when you're doing a saute or you can use, um, vegetable broth or stock. I also use, I don't do any oil. I'll also use sometimes, um, a little bit of, of white wine, but that's usually with some type of a tomato sauce. But most of the time I would say vegetable broth stock. Um, one of the things that I always talk about too, if you're new, is that vegetable broth burns off really, really quick. So what's really nice with this is that, um, let's make a little noise weird. Um, what I do with this is I always will cut, sometimes if I'm doing something and I want it to saute for a while, I will cut the vegetable broth in half. So I'll say like, if it's two tablespoons of vegetable broth, I'll do one of water and one of vegetable broth. And then that way it doesn't burn off so fast, which is kind of a quick, easy tip. And it's also, you get the flavor of the vegetable broth without all the cost of a vegetable broth. And you can make your own, which is really good too. All right, so we got that. So it says when it starts to sputter, so it's actually starting to bubble up a little bit. We're gonna add onions. I kept them in a large dice just because a stew to me needs to be hearty. So I like the, the bigger chunks of things. So I'm gonna add those in. 
You, this is a white onion that I just added in, but you can add in red onion, yellow onion, whatever you want. Um, and if you're not a big onion fan, then you could keep it out and you could add in some scallions or um, something that, you know, something that's a little bit like that. Or, or we were doing a little bit of um, shallot, which is another thing. But I love onions. Anything onions, garlic, love it. That's a great starter for me. But I know there are some people that are allergic to garlic. So I've got the carrots, celery, same thing, just three stalks of celery. And I just did, you know, like bite-sized chunks. It is so pretty. I like, I like stews too, because when stews, when you make them, you've got, you've got the chunks and then it just has the color and the brightness and things, which I think looks good. When I do like a lot of times and stuff, I'll do like vegetable, even like a vegetable soup, I'll make it chunky. And then other times I'll make really small dice. So it's almost like a, just a mixture, almost like a puree a little bit. So carrots, same thing, just diced up. You can either peel your carrots or you don't have to peel your carrots. It really kind of depends. Usually what I'll do is I'll wash them down first and I'll just scrub them. But if they're starting to get like, they're starting to get like little things coming out of the carrots a little bit because they've been in your refrigerator a little long, then usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll do a quick peel on them. So that's usually the difference between the two. I'm just gonna grab some spoons that I hadn't grabbed. Okay, so we got there. So we got the onions, the celery, and the carrots. So that's all ready to go. Um, so we're going to watch it a little bit. I'm going to add the, the lid to it so it gives it a little bit more of that as far as being able to cook and the heat in there. All right. So the other ingredients that we're going to add into this is we're going to be some tomato paste. Um, one of the things somebody asked me that because we do, we do some, um, we started cook with me classes and actually demo classes at our community center at Hilltop. And one of the things they said is, you know, that what they hate to do is when things have tomato paste in them, and then you go and you buy that can and you end up using like two tablespoons and then you got like three quarters of a can left. This is a really cool way to do it. This is um, um, Simple Truth Organic, which is, I think was Safeway, which I, no, it's King Supers, so, or Kroger's. So I just buy the tubes of the tomato paste and they keep in your pantry or, you know, wherever you keep cabinets and stuff like that for quite a while. So I just, you know, squirt out what I need, put the, put the lid back on and just keep, you know, the top back on and just keep using it. And that way I don't have all the waste. I mean, you can definitely, you can definitely freeze tomato paste, but this is a really nice handy way and stuff to be able to keep tomato paste. Slow cooker options. Yes. So you could do this exact same recipe, slow cooker, or, you know, they have the, um, the Nesco, which I don't have a, a, that with me anymore, but Nesco has, it was kind of a slow cooker, but it was, it heats up faster than a slow cooker. I used to do the stew in that. And it was, it is almost, remember I don't know if you think about the Nesco is like those big, huge turkey cookers and you're like grandma would have them on their cabinets. They made smaller versions of that on like QVC. And we had one for a long time, but it started getting, didn't look very good. Let's put that way. The, the lid was falling apart, but that was a good way to put that in there and slow cooker, same thing. Just add the ingredients in it and just let it cook all day long. And think about, you know, not just the smell for an hour while it's cooking in your house. You've got the smell all day long, which is, especially in the cold weather like this, how wonderful get to smell like mushrooms and potatoes and carrots and all that. So in, same thing, I would say you're probably, you're probably going to ask me time next. So if you're going to do it in a slow cooker, so you've got a good slow cooker, I would say you're probably about six, seven hours. So you're going to add things and, and you could, so I would do is I would add like all your ingredients other than the peas and I would keep the peas out and then a little bit of the rosemary because rosemary can overpower to the very end. And so like the last, 10, 15 minutes when you're getting things ready, put in the rosemary and give that, so it gives the flavor and then put in your peas. And then if you wanted to do corn or something like that, that was like frozen vegetables, add those at the end, so. Yeah, Instant Pot is another one you could do. I've done vegetable soups. I've done, you know, I do beans, I do rice, all those things in an Instant Pot, um, you know, the, the pressure cookers, and that works out really well too. So if you do it in an Instant Pot, I would do the same thing. I would add your vegetables and your spice and stuff, do the rosemary at the end. So when you actually let it, um, you know, you, you kind of let it simmer down a little bit, then, you know, open it up and then add your vegetables and like your peas and your rosemary, and then let it simmer for about 10, 15 minutes. But I would put it on for, usually soups are about 30 minutes. So I would say anywhere between 25, 30 minutes, and that'll give you where your potatoes are gonna be soft and your carrots and your onions and all that. So. There's so many different options with this. It's, you know, you don't have to just do it here. You could also slow cook it if you want to on the stove. You could just put it on low and then just kind of watch it and make it go. And, you know, two, three hours later, it's ready to go. So, 
but it could be a kind of a quick recipe or a long-term recipe, however you want to do it. So the only thing you want to do is you just want to watch and make sure that, you know, if it starts getting like the liquid starts burning off, then just go in and add just a little bit of water or add a little bit more vegetable broth. Like that. And think about too, if you decide you want to have, you know, the small chunks or small dice of the, the carrots and the celery and the onions, it's going to cook a lot faster. I made them definitely chunky because I wanted, like I said, the big chunks with that. So it's going to take just a little bit longer, but we got the time to do that. So all great questions about that. All right. So then, so I'm going to let that go. So I'll go ahead and start some of the salad. It, the salad is super simple, easy. So let's do the dressing. So I've got a half a cup of vegetable broth. And if you don't have vegetable broth in the house, let's just say you go into the pantry and um, it's got, you know, the vegetable broth is gone or something like that. Water, same thing. This is the vegetable broth just gives a little more flavor, but you, you could use to replace it with water. That there. All right. So then we've got raw cane sugar. So let me just go ahead and I will grab these ingredients because I have them ready. And if you want to cut down, this is a really good recipe and stuff for a dressing. But if you want to cut down on the sugar, think about using like, so instead of the raw cane, you would do a monk fruit. Um, the monk fruit. So if you've got three tablespoons of the raw cane, I would say start out with a teaspoon of monk fruit because it's going to be a lot sweeter. So do one teaspoon, start it, taste it, see what you think. And if you need to add more sweetener, you can, because that way, if you, you know, I don't want you adding three tablespoons of monk fruit and then go, this is terrible and throwing it away. So that's one thing I always bring up when I'm cooking too, is all these different spices that I have on here. Um, I find that a lot of recipes out there over spice. They think that, you know, when it's plant-based food and it's a lot of plants or it's tofu or whatever else that you're using, that you've got to over spice, which you don't. I mean, there's nothing better in the, I think the beauty of, of vegetables is being able to taste really what that vegetable tastes like, like potatoes and peas, they're so sweet and they're good. But when you over spice them, it just, it kind of doesn't do well. So I don't want you throwing things out. So always even with my recipes, because every palate's different. Think about if I say a tablespoon of dried Italian herb seasoning, start out with like maybe a, a half a teaspoon and then just taste it. You know, you can, it's, and there's nothing better than tasting when you're cooking. So taste it and go, you know what? I need more. So I will put a teaspoon in there or I will put a tablespoon and then just change your, change all of your recipes to where it makes it to where you and your family or just you and stuff have that, that have that taste palette or that flavor palette that you're looking for. So always recommend that. And I think that's with anybody's recipes. I don't care if they're world famous or not world famous, test the spices because a lot of times things will be way overspiced. Okay. So I've got back to the dressing. This is cooking great. So I get the vegetable broth, so raw cane sugar. So like I said, you could use the monk fruit, you could do um, date paste, you could do you know any of the different flavors you want. You could actually just leave the raw cane sugar or the, the sweetening out because you've got some agave at that point too. So I'm just gonna add that in. And the, the thing about this is when you put in the raw cane, and the reason why I'm doing a little bit ahead of time is because I wanna make sure that the, the raw cane and stuff actually disappears. So you just get the sweetener, but not all the chunkiness. So that'll take a few minutes. So then I have a little bit of agave. Hi, I fucked up. Did you say that was raw cane that you need? Raw cane. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. But like I said, you can use monk fruit. You can use, there's so many other things, sweeteners, date paste, whatever you want to do, or just even completely leave it out and just use the agave if you'd like to. All right. So then we've got minced shallot. I've noticed. That uh, can I ask you a question, please? Sure. How would eggplant work in that? Do you think that would mix well? What was it? Sorry, I couldn't hear it. Do you think eggplant oh, would eggplant mix well? Eggplant in this, with that? in the, uh, the stew, would actually be great yeah. because when eggplant cooks up, so it's been cooking for a while, when it cooks up, it gets real firm. Um, so you could either, so you just put it in the eggplant and then, you know, I put it more towards the end of the recipe because otherwise if you let it in there for like a low slow cooker or something option, it tends to get mushy. So I would put it towards the end and that way it gives the firmness of it. Or if you wanted to, you could bake it out just a little bit. So kind of roast it out and then put it in and then you get those, it's almost like the, the meat texture. So it's giving you that same type of like like meatiness that mushrooms do, but the mushrooms because of the portobellos is going to add that darkness to it also. So it looks like a, almost like a brown gravy. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree. I'm not a big eggplant guy, especially with this recipe. Yep. So you could do eggplant. Same thing. No. Like it. Thank you. 
All right, let me get all the shallots out of there. If you cut them up, you want to put them in there. I've noticed shallots here too lately. Um, I don't know if it's just the whole supply system and stuff, but shallots, I don't know if you guys have noticed it too. They're really like when you start to chop into them, like your eyes start watering and things. And there's there's tends to be quite a few different onions and species of onions and stuff that tend to be really potent right now. So, all right, so then we've got white wine vinegar. We've got apple cider vinegar. A little bit of that because you want the acid. That's going to cut the sweetness, which is really good. And then the, the, the sesame seeds, I'm going to leave those off to the side because I'm going to put those on the salad on the top. So, you know, if you've got black sesame seeds, if you wanted to do that, white sesame seeds, they're always really good toasted and they're easy to toast up and then put them back into a jar and just have them toasted ready. So you don't have to toast them up every time that you get ready to do a recipe if you wanted to do that. Okay. A little bit more vegetable broth. All right, so everything is nice and got translucent onions thing. So they always, you know, one way you can always test it too is just do your carrots. Nice and soft. Another thing is to check your, check your celery because that's one that tends to like your carrots will be ready and your potatoes will be ready and your celery is still hard. But that's looking good. Okay, so now I'm gonna stir in the mushrooms. So let me turn this down just a little bit at way I'm talking. So portobello mushrooms, this is the big part of this recipe. And I know that, yeah, I agree. I am not a, I am not a mushroom person either. So like to eat a chunk of, of mushroom like this, no, yeah. But one thing that we usually do with portobellos is you go in and you take out all the gills. So you got a spoon, and all the brown that's underneath, so all the gills is what they call it, you're scraping those out. You don't wanna do that on this recipe. The reason why is because the gills are gonna add the flavor and the color with this, and more so the color than anything else. So I've left, you can see all the, the big chunks, and I left it big chunky because I will be scooting the mushrooms. I will eat the, the broth and everything around it because it gives a really good flavor, but I will be scooting the mushrooms off to the side or they'll be end up in Jerry's stew, so. But like I said, would I'm you, not a fun would you recommend would you recommend tuna or salmon gills? Because I'm trying to decide. What was, I'm sorry? Would you recommend tuna or salmon gills? Yeah, so yeah, we're plant-based, so we don't use any, any animal products or anything. So that's why you're seeing like the mushrooms and everything else that's all together here. So I would do, if you're gonna do something, then you want that, like the more kind of like the meaty. How do we cook it. up steak then? I would do, you know, I would definitely like do the, um, the tomato paste is going to make it a really pretty kind of a brown reddish color, but I would do like your eggplant and things like Wait, that. I'm confused first. on that part. We, we don't cook up steak or anything. You're going to have to repeat the questions for me because it's a little hard. Once we I don't get the cook up burner, steak or anything? Going. No steak? Turkey? I was going to say I'm also pretty confused because I just ordered a bunch of tuna and salmon because you had mentioned gills. Okay. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, it's not so gills and stuff. It's just, that's what they call it on a portobello mushroom, but no, not as, not as far as any animal products. We don't do it. It's all plant-based. So I whacked a turkey over the head last night for nothing. I, I killed it for this. Okay. Okay. All right. So I added in the mushrooms and then I added in the garlic. So I'm getting that going. So be careful about adding any moisture when you add in your mushrooms. And the reason why is mushrooms put out a lot of moisture. So if you put in too much, then you end up having lots of extra moisture if you're doing something. In a stew, not so bad because I'm gonna be adding the water and the, you know, like if I have got some extra vegetable broth, which I do, and there's probably a half a cup. So I'll get rid of that just so I don't have to put it back in the fridge. Okay. So I'll just add a little bit. And I'll show you what it looks like so far. Stir in the. So, so far, so good. Smells good. It's got all the garlic and things. One of the other ways that you could change things is you could actually add, instead of doing just regular garlic, there's the minced garlic, you could do in the roasted garlic. So if you roast up a bunch of, of um, garlic cloves, you could chop that up and put that in there. And that's always a really nice taste too. It gives you that nice roasted flavor. Stir up the dressing.
a little bit of sweetness, and it's not heavy acid as far as tasting the dressing. So I can taste a little bit of the shallots and things, but a really like a very light flavor, which is really nice. And that's more what I'm looking for because I have a little bit more heaviness with the stew. So all the gills that are on here, that are on the, the, the uh, portobello mushroom are starting to, you can start to see like my, a little bit of the moisture is in here getting really dark because the gills will, that brown gill color and stuff will stain pretty much anything. So that's what's gonna give you that really rich, almost like a brown gravy type of a look and feel. Okay, so we got those stirring. So I'm gonna add the water and the potatoes. Like I said, I'm just gonna dump out the rest. I've got a little bit of vegetable broth left so I don't have to put it in the fridge. So do that, just add that. And then five cups of water. And you're now probably thinking, wow, that's a lot of moisture that's going in there or a lot of liquid. The thing about it at the end is we're actually, you don't have to do this, but we're gonna add some to the blender and blend it up. And then that way it gets really thick, but you don't have to do that at all. If you're done, ready for it, you can just actually not blend it up and eat it just like that. Five. You can always add more. So there we go. Okay. So we got the water. We got potatoes. So these are just russet potatoes, but you could do, you know, like the. Well, ma'am, I messed up. I messed up. Oh my god. I messed up. I messed up. Oh my god. Get them off. Oh my god. Is he all right? I don't know. All right, oh my, so oh now gosh. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the potatoes. These are russet potatoes, same thing, large dice. And the large dice is because it matches the rest of the vegetables, but you could do, you know, like the fingerlings, you could do, you know, cut those up. You could leave them, you know, the little uh, red baby potatoes, all those. So you can change them up to whatever you're looking for. I just had lots of russet potatoes in there. Ma'am, Joe just fucking set his house on fire. Are we not going to talk about that? I. I swear with Zoom. Thank you. Sometimes you get Zoom bombers when new people are signing up. That sounds what that was like. Okay. All right. Okay. So now I've got water potatoes in there. So now my tomato paste. So a third of a cup. All right, then I can just take that, throw that away, recycle it. Stir it up. So the tomato paste and the, and the brown from the, the gills and stuff on the portobello is gonna start giving you, and I'll show you right before it starts actually simmering up, but it's gonna give you a really kind of a dark reddish brown type of a sauce, which is just wonderful. Okay, then we got the tomato, so I got the Italian seasoning. So Italian seasoning and smoked paprika, we're gonna add that in. Stir that in and I'll show it to you and then I'm gonna have it start to boil. All right. Don't wanna tip it too much. You can see where the dark sauce is, is happening. Already looking delicious. All right, so let's get the lid on this. And we will do that to the side. All right, so we've got peas for later, rosemary for later. I didn't buy any um, fresh parsley, so I forgot to put that on the list and stuff. So we're going to be using dried parsley, which will work. I'm not a big parsley, like, you know, big chunks of parsley. So that'll actually work really well. It'll just blend in and it'll be nice, nice flavor. Okay, so the dressing. Still a little bit of the, the raw cane at the bottom, so I'll just kind of give it a quick stir. And then you think about this too, the dressing, you could always make the day before, put it in like a mason jar. When my mason jars now, every time, whoops, as I spill it, um, whenever I do mason jars now, I always do the plastic lids. I don't know if I've shared that with you and I'll show you one. So I buy these little plastic lids that are on Amazon. And these are really nice. You can get them all different sizes. So when you have the little pints or the quarts, 
and I happen to have a lot of the bigger ones, um, these work really well. So when you're, you know, you've got things in there like you've made the, the plant-based mayo, all those different dressings, you can actually, when you put the, the plastic lid on it, because it does have a little seal here, you don't get that that aluminum type of flavor or that, or it starts like molding across the, the rims and stuff. So these are really nice to have. So if I made this dressing the day before, um, what I would do is just, I'd put it in one of those, uh, like a mason jar, one of the small ones, and then I just put the lid on it and put it in the fridge and it's all ready to go. But these keep things in the refrigerator for so much longer. It's really, really nice to have. Put that off the side. All right, so spinach, grab a big bowl. So regular spinach, you can buy the baby spinach. You know, you could mix in other lettuces if you'd like to. I love the big, all the big chunks of veggies. Good to know you don't have, yeah, don't. This is the one recipe where I'd say you don't want to remove the gills on the portobellas. Most everything else, like if you do sandwiches and things like that with it and you're cooking them up or roasting them, you do want to remove the gills because otherwise it just kind of gets all over everything and turns everything brown. But here, that's what you want. So this is just regular spinach. If you wanted to, you know, not have the big, some of the big leaves of the spinach, you know, feel free to chop it up and kind of give it a rough chop, but it's just, you know, just right out of the stores, all ready to go. Stems, everything. You know, if you wanted to, you could add, like if you wanted a little bit of uh, bitterness to it, um, and a little bit that type of like more peppery, you could add some arugula to it. You could add, you know, some red leaf to add color. You know, if you've got a bunch of different things in the fridge, go for it or just beautiful spinach. The other things that we're gonna add, so I'm gonna put the, I'll put a little bit of the almonds in, but I've got, um, so dried cranberries. I didn't, I only had a few dried cranberries, but I had leftover dried goji berries. So G-O-G-O-J-I. And they're, they're like, like one of the superfoods and stuff. So I had left over and this is like my last of the goji berries. So I'm gonna use those instead. They are very similar to a cranberry, um, not as tart, a little sweeter, but they're, but they're more expensive. So I had them for another recipe. So I'm gonna use them, All right? Then toasted almonds. If you don't wanna do almonds and you happen to have like pine nuts or walnuts. I always remember when somebody's talk about different nuts. It reminds me of the, the, the uh, show that's out there, which is Best in Show. And the guy's like, hey, I had pine nuts and peanuts and, you know, so. But yeah, so I just, I'm just, I actually had a bunch of almonds. So sliced almonds. So I just used those, toasted them up last night and they are ready to go. But pecans, I mean, it's just pretty much anything that you want to use. So that's everything that goes into the salad. It's pretty simple. Um, I got a little bit of the, the sesame seeds, which I'll put a little bit of that in there. And then that's ready to go. You could add, you know, if you wanted to do some um, roasted tofu, because maybe you had some tofu that's left over, you could put that in there. I mean, all kinds of things or keep it very simple. I like the little bit more of the complication of the stew, but even though it's very simple and then having a very simple salad is really good. So Jerry will have probably two big bowls of, of stew and probably one great big, huge bowl of salad, maybe this bowl, who knows? That's Jerry. So I'm gonna set that off to the side because I'll put the dressing on here in just a few minutes. Just gonna get this boiling. So if you were making the stew at home, <clears throat> so questions for you. So if you were making, oops, was I just spilled all over, making stew at home, what would you, what would you add to it? What would be some of your favorite ingredients that you would add? You want to put those in chat? That would be great. I always like to see what everybody else would add or like how, maybe like how mom made stew. Cause I think it's all very different depending on what part of the country that you're in. Peas, yep, love peas, corn, yep. I add some more different types of mushrooms. Yes, so you could have like a medley of mushrooms, which would be really pretty. Thyme is always very good. I like thyme. Swiss chard, spinach. Mm -hmm. You could have like this kind of a thing. Like if you have certain things that are still left over in your um, your vegetable bins, you could definitely add, you know, some different, some of those like Swiss chard, you know, spinach, you know, cause you've got, like if you didn't want to make as big a salad, you could put the spinach in cause it gives that nice greenery. Kale is another thing, especially if you have like some frozen kale which we do. 
make a stew. I had a barley mixture with some small brown. That would be really good. I love lentils. Yeah, so barley, lentils, and all that. You recommend to add. So which food do you recommend to add? So I, you know, like stews. So let me answer that question for you. So stews and stuff, I usually try to do pretty simple. I try to do like the, you know, the celery, the onions, the carrots. I think that's always the first starter. And then I'll usually do potatoes. Every once in a while, I might add like a lentil because I like the idea of a lentil because it gives you a little bit more texture. But a lot of times I'll just do the potatoes. And then if I add a couple other things, it's probably peas and corn. So frozen peas and corn. And it's simple, it's easy. Broccoli is another one that's really good. You know, like right at the end and stuff, you're putting the broccoli in so it doesn't get too mushy. Um, and I just, like I said, stay simple. Unless I do a vegetable soup and then I'm adding like everything in the kitchen sink into that. Bulgur, yep. Cauliflower, cauliflower is a good one too. Especially, you know, since the sauce and stuff is gonna be really dark, it's gonna take on the, you know, the kind of the brown reddish, reddishness of the liquid with that. So that would actually be, cauliflower would be really good. And it seems like that I buy cauliflower and we eat it, but then sometimes and stuff I end up with, you know, I eat like a half a half of a cauliflower head and stuff and I'll end up with half. And so usually I'll make like wings, Jerry will, you know, he'll have wings on a Saturday or Sunday, but cauliflower would be another one that you could put in here that would be really good. I'm mean, thinking there's like everything, you know, there's tons of things in the stores that you could just add to it. You could do zucchini, you know, more put that towards the end, your, your um, yellow squash. I mean, there's green beans. That's another thing that I think that, you know, a lot of people don't eat a lot of green beans at certain season. And this would be a really good way to, to get your green beans soft and, and really good. So it is boiling, doing well. Okay. So I'm not going to do the salad yet because I don't want to add cauliflower. Okay. Great. So next question is, what is some of your favorite winter dishes? Let's do around like soups and stews. So other than just a regular vegetable stew, what's some of, some of your other favorite winter dishes? Well, I've got just a few minutes while this is cooking. I was trying to make my favorite winter dishes. I think it's more like an Italian lentil soup, which I love because it's like lentils and tomatoes, and then it has rosemary and thyme and all that. And it's just, it's just one of those ones that you never get tired of. That's probably one of my favorites. And then of course I go back to my Kansas roots and I'm, and I, what I do then is I just do, you know, mashed potatoes and corn. That's, that's probably what that's, that's easy um, type of thing. Lasagna, pasta, chili, chili. Yeah. Chili is really good. We just, we made some things the other day and stuff and added some ingredients like a pumpkin chili. I don't know if you've ever made a pumpkin chili is really good. Like anything that's hearty. I think that sticks to your ribs is pot pie. Love pot pies. Where in Kansas? Yeah, so Kansas, I grew up, let's see, I was born in Augusta, which is outside of El Dorado, and then moved 32 different times with my dad. He was uh, worked for the Services of the Blind. So he moved us to all these little small and medium cities all over the place and then went to KU for college. So that's my background. Grew up, of course, if you know, if you know about uh, Kansas, it's meat and potatoes. So meat and potatoes, and it was always, if there was an iceberg salad, maybe on there, and then it was always corn. And that's probably why I love corn and potatoes. And then um, usually there's always, not usually, always for my dad, a dessert. So it always was like apple pie or peach cobbler or all that. And that's, that's a lot where, you know, where, where you learn to cook is when you're a kid and stuff, you know, and you're helping your mom prepare things and that's fun, so. Rock Chalk Jayhawk, yep, exactly. Borscht, yep, so Borscht is, yep, is a, is a, I would say there's not a lot of people know about Borscht, but yeah, that's, that is definitely a popular recipe. Lawrence, Kansas here, yeah. Good old Lawrence, woohoo, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. I, yeah, I was uh, Danny Manning and all those kind of things. So all the guys that all went through KU and great school to go through, as I would say, great school to go to in, in uh, Kansas because very diverse. Um, it's not one you would think in Kansas that it's the, the, the culture wouldn't be very diverse, but very diverse and a lot of fun. That was, that was the cool thing about it. Just kind of give it a quick stir. And then what we're going to do is because the last thing that we put in there was the potatoes, but this is also a recipe. If you think about it, when you're, when you're cooking it, you could put, you know, instead of going, I'm going to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, dump it all in a pot. 
except for the rosemary because the rosemary can overpo overpower and your peas and then whatever, like if you're doing corn or something towards the end, but dump it all in a pot and just start it cooking. So you don't have to go through the step by step by step because your potatoes and everything else are all going to cook at the same time. That's what I like. I like one pot meals. Do you do any egg dishes or only be only vegan? Yep. I do, you know, we do like, you know, the fake eggs. So we'll do like the, um, you know, flaxseed eggs or the, the, the powdered eggs or something like that. And most of them, I would say most of the time, if I ever do type anything that requires like something that you want, like an egg type of an ingredient, I'll do the flaxseed eggs. I haven't had eggs in 16 years, I think. Don't miss them. Oh, the Holland, yeah, so hollandaise sauce, we have made, we could do actually one, we could do a breakfast one, that's a really good one. We do a, um, what am I, Benedict's, I was trying to think what the name was, Veggie Benedict's, and it's and it's like, you know, you've got the, so you can get the English muffins that don't have eggs and all the, the bad things in them, and then of course you can put, you know, and then it has, um, you can you can put roasted tofu, but you don't have to, but then we do, we usually do, it has asparagus, tomatoes, different ingredients, so avocado, so it usually stands about that tall, and then we have a veggie Benedict sauce that is really good, really creamy, and it's, you know, when you're doing a Benedict sauce, you have to be careful making sure that things don't separate, or that, because, you know, I always talk about, like, if you watch cooking shows, oh, the Benedict sauce separated, and, and you always get the hollandaise sauce, and you're always, you know, get, you get grated down, so we've got one and stuff that you can make really quick, and it makes, like, in the blender, probably makes about that much in the blender, so, and it's really good, but we definitely could, yeah, love that recipe, printed it out. That and you know, like, you know, making raw granolas and all kinds of stuff like that is just really good. We definitely have some of that coming up. A few more minutes. So what's the favorite, what's your favorite um, breakfast recipes? Because you have just a couple minutes before this is ready. Kanji, okay, good. Waffles, yep, waffles with strawberries and whipped cream. So if you've got a good whipped cream, that's uh, you can make it like with, um, you know, like a coconut milk. Waffles are always good. If you've got a good waffle maker, if you've got, you've got um, pancakes, you know, those are things that you can make up a lot and put them in the freezer. And then you just pull them out of the freezer when you, you know, put them in the toaster and you're ready to go. Just like, you know, like the old Eggo waffles and stuff that you could make your own. And you can make them sweet or savory. I would say that, you know, we always see like um, the Esseltons and stuff where they love them more savory. So they'll do more like spinach on them and um, tomatoes and things like that in the morning. I'd probably morning more sweet than I am savory. Potatoes, shredded, you know, shredded potatoes and, and ta yep, tofu scramble and veggies. Wonderful. Yep. Adding any things like, you know, add, if you want to make it a little bit more um, Spanish, you could add in the corn tortilla, which gives it a really nice flavor. That's always good. Pancakes, yep. Yeah. Cereals, granolas, you know, all kinds of different things. I mean, like pretty much anything that's out there. And you could always, you know, overcook like stew could be a breakfast item. So sometimes there's times when I wake up and it's just like, I don't feel like cereal. I don't feel like, you know, something else that's out there or um, like oatmeal or something. And I'll just, I'll go look for things that are, that are more like the hearty. So it could be something that's left over from the night before. Or it could be mashed potatoes and corn. That's my, I think my one comfort food. Starting to look really beautiful. Just kind of keep testing the potatoes. Hot. Do a guy fietti. Hot, hot. It's almost about, about another minute, about another minute or so. But like you said, when you, you know, if you're doing this instead of like waiting in the kitchen and and you know, making through the potatoes and things like that, put it all in one big pot and then add your other stuff at the very end. But it's tasting really good. And then like I said, well, I'm not a big mushroom fan, so the mushrooms will go off to the side, but the flavors that it's adding, good. Okay, so we'll let that boil just a bit longer. So the dressing is ready. The dressing makes more than enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab 
both the kids, so puppy kids just showed up here. They were in the, the, the bedroom kind of hanging out and now they're here thinking that it's dinner time or something. It's all, it's like, that's what I have at the house. I have two dogs and Jerry. And so like when things are ready or they gets close to being ready, they all three hang around in the kitchen. So they obviously are all following each other's lead here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the dressing on. And then I'm just gonna give it a quick, not a hard massage, but just kind of mix it all in there. And the reason why I do that is then because then you don't have all the dressing because it is a very liquidy dressing. It doesn't have a lot of thickness to it. So I'm just adding it in there and just getting where the everything will be on the actual spinach and it'll have less of the liquid or the dressing and stuff at the bottom. But do know when you're actually doing this and you're actually mixing it in, all of your cranberries, your goji berries, whatever you have in there are all gonna go to the bottom. So then you're gonna have to do just a nice handful and bring it all back out like that. And then the way to say if you've got enough dressing, because you'll see that here I probably have another half a cup, three quarters a cup, is just to take a piece of lettuce and try it. And if you have enough lettuce, if you have enough dressing and stuff, you'll know and you won't add any more. So drizzle on your dressing, mix it in, and then come back and say, I need to add some more. Otherwise, you get those drowned salads. I don't know if you've ever gone to restaurants and you pour on the balsamic vinegar and it's all drowned. Okay, let me take this off. Let's add it to a pretty bowl. And if this was just us at home, this would be the pretty bowl. That way I can put a top on it, not have to worry about it, and away you go. Don't have to be fancy at home to have really good food. Make sure I'm getting all the goji berries, all almonds, everything out. And then that's why I keep the almonds. So at the, at the very end and stuff, you keep a little bit of the almonds and the, the goji berries. Is this, then you can actually use them as decoration. I love this salad because you've got you've got the sweetness, but you've also got the tartness, you've got the chewiness, you've got a little bit of the nut flavor, all those. So even though I did all of these almonds, I probably am not going to use them. So I will just actually put them into a baggie and put them in the fridge and use them for something else. Sesame seeds. That's just all about being pretty. And then I have black sesame seeds. Which I love because they just add depth to whatever you're making. Don't have to put black sesame seeds and you don't have to buy them just because I have them. So there is my cranberry, almond, and spinach salad, which is delicious. I'll put that to the side. Very pretty, and it's also one of those ones that you could make over the holiday season because of the, you know, the greens and the reds and the weights and all that. So it's very pretty with that. Okay, now we're, I think we are ready. Let's add in the peas. Add as much peas or as little peas as you want. Like I said, another one you could do, you could add the broccoli, you could add the corn. The corn would be nice, really pretty yellow color. And pretty much on your peas is all you're looking for is to heat them up. So it's not a long cooking time. Rosemary. You could do fresh, like a sprig of fresh rosemary or dried. I always have the dried on hand, so a lot easier to do that. And then I'm going to let it simmer just a little bit to get the peas. Let me show you really quick. Here is the color so far, because I'm going to put it in the blender here in a minute. But see the color on the bottom? So it's kind of that red brown, which is your gravy, which is really good. Okay, so taste it. Okay. This time we'll put it all. Good, still hot. Grab my blender.
So I'm going to do this way. This is simmering. So I'm going to grab out a couple cups. Like I said, this is not something you have to do. It's just if you want it thicker, this is how you do it. Grab some of the liquid. I made a big mess. All right, so let me get this blended while that's cooking. We're good on time. So it's interesting when you actually blend it up, you get kind of that. I don't know, not really the prettiest green color, but once you put it back in here, it goes back in with the brown and the red and it mix in. So it's almost like it's almost like a blended up vegetables to make like a really thick vegetable broth. So it's gonna add a lot of nice thickness to it. So that, that way, when you do it this way, you don't have to sit there and add, you know, like some back in the days and stuff when cooking with my mom, lots of cornstarch and all that. Don't need to do all that. Get all that out. It's already bubbling, looking good. Put some water in there. I'll show you here in just a second. Just kind of rinse this down. Parsley real quick, and then I will show you. Bubbles. Bubbling, very much so. Isn't that pretty? Nice, see how thick it is now versus just the, the liquid? It's gotten a really big thickness. So if you keep you know cooking it and you cook it, you want it even a little bit thicker, leave the lid off. And then just keep letting it simmer a little bit. And then it's going to, some the moisture and stuff is going to simmer out. And then you're going to have even thicker. But this is a really nice, so nice thickness to it. So not too thick where it's a lot of gummy, because I've had some stews and stuff where they're just, it seems like it's just vegetables and a lot of gumminess. That's just perfect. Let's taste the potato. Perfect. Get this off. We will dish it out and I can show you what it looks like in a pretty dish. That over there. Jerry's drooling. Let's do it this way. And see, pretty. My old cookbook, is this in there? Uh, no, it's not. I need to start, I talked about Jerry and stuff the other day and I said, I need to start um, looking at all the recipes and adding and starting on a new cookbook. Cause it's like, I see Chef JJ and she's like on her third or fourth, fifth cookbook. And I'm like, oh. like lady, I wished I could, could do that but I need to start doing that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Under so plantbased kitchen dot so plantbased kitchen dot com. Jerry will put that on there. It the recipe is in there, so you can grab it off of that site. But also, if you when you signed up for this class and stuff, you have the recipes where you can go onto the Google Drive and download it too. A little bit of parsley to add some color. You could also add microgreens, sprouts, at the end. So if you had like the sunflower microgreens or sprouts, it'd be great. And so this is the bowl. I also probably in here that I just made is probably another bowl this size. So it makes quite a bit. 
So if you don't want, you know, if you want just this size, because maybe it's just you at home and I get that, then just half the recipe. So instead of doing like three stalks of, of celery, you know, three of three carrots and stuff, just do it like one and a half. And then that way you'll get a bowl that's this big and you can have like for dinner and then maybe the next day. But if you really like stew, make the full recipe. And this is hot. So there is our stew, beefless stew. And then I would actually put my hand underneath, but it's really hot. So beefless stew. And here is our cranberry almond and it's actually goji berry, but cram so almonds and spinach salad. So there is dinner tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys make it. If you do make it, you know, please send me photos or let me know how you changed it up because it's always fun to hear. I'd love to hear how the, you know, everybody out there and stuff changes up the recipes because that's what it's all about. It's all about building community and learning from each other. And you may come up with something or you put something and I'll be like, I didn't even think about that. That's great. That sounds great. Like I love the cauliflower and all that. I think tons of that in the refrigerator. So I hope you guys enjoyed. We will see you again in two weeks. Love you. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye.